hello, welcome to my channel, I'm Doug, hello, hello, no, I haven't ate since like Friday or Saturday, I can't remember, it's like frigging Wednesday, I've got about five cups of coffee in me on an empty stomach, so I'm going to shake my way through a couple videos here. I'm sure sometimes you get discouraged watching my channel because of the level of intellect and craftsmanship that it may be discouraging. I get it. It's, you know, don't give up. Don't give up. Just keep downing liquor and bong hits and you too can be as dumb as me. I'm just kidding. I have everything on there but the microwave. And I thought about putting a microwave on there. <laughs> but... It's only like four or 500 pounds. It's not even that much. Oddly, the heaviest thing on there is the dehumidifier. That thing's like 75 pounds, but, yep. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. So today, <laughs> I do have a lot of cool hardware. I've got a lot of cool stuff. I am so shaky. I am so shaky. You'll have to bear with me as I shake my way through. I can even hear it in my voice, like, I have got a lot of coffee in me on an empty stomach. It's not good. It is not good. I have a lot of really neat stuff that I've never used. Bear with me one moment while I get ready. I do not have a damn thing to eat in this house. It's like two, one o'clock in the morning, nothing is open. I found a half a pack of donuts in my work backpack from our cafeteria. They're freaking gross. I've got to eat something. I am shaking so fucking bad. I probably could have done without the six cups of espresso, but it is what it is. So, as I shake my way through this video, hopefully these donuts will soak in some of the caffeine. I got a ton of shit I never even tried yet. These. This. This. These. I think that's about it. So anybody can tell tell what these are this I've talked about before this I've never busted out yet and I'll give you a hint to what that is All right here's your clue a little doweling jig for putting dowels in whoa I am shaky so the thing with dowels is I wanted to make some really big boards and they really don't come that big. You can't just go buy them. So what a lot of woodworkers do, will join two boards together. And according, to, you know, people debate whether it's true or not, but dowels are supposed to strengthen the bond and the joint between two boards. Whether that's true or not, I have no clue. But the idea is you would drill a hole with the dowel jig. And this is going to help you make it line up exactly right. And you'd have to do the same on the corresponding piece exactly, exactly right. And glue the whole edge glue these and that will help maintain a good strong joint i've never used one they seem pretty cool some people swear that your joint will be just as strong without those so let me go grab something big, big spoiled baby not only do I have a doweling kit that I've never once even touched, 
I also have a top of the line grizzly biscuit machine for making biscuits. Honey, how's your biscuit? Um, I've never ever used a biscuit. I'm tangled here, sorry. Are we in frame? Okay, so. Well, so I have bought a bunch of grizzly stuff. And I love grizzly stuff. And I saw this on sale. Whoa, I almost pulled the whole thing down. And these are biscuits. They remind me of like communion wafers, but they're hardwood. Pretty stiff little suckers. And these come in different sizes. Made of straight grain hardwood. Compressed wafer shaped biscuits. Expand with water based glues for tighter joints. Ideal furniture, cabinets, trim, special projects. Yeah, so the idea is just like the dowels, when you apply glue and get it in the hole, it swells up and makes an incredibly tight little bond. People are now arguing it makes no difference at all. The glue itself is plenty strong. Now, I don't buy that. I would think dowels and biscuits would make a stronger joint. So this is a Milwaukee, or I'm sorry, Grizzly biscuit joiner. It's, I guess, a joiner. And the way this thing works, after looking at it, it's fairly simple. It's a angle grinder with a router bit attached to it. And when you push on the side of a board, a little blade little blade comes out spinning 100 miles an hour or faster yeah a little carbide tip disc will come out to your predetermined settings and carve what's called a biscuit groove or whatever in there and those will make a really supposedly strong joint <clears throat> i am so shaky so those i've never used i've never used a damn dowel I used a doll one time, God, I want to say it was like junior frigging high school was the last time I used a doll. They come in different sizes. They come in entire lengths. You could buy like a whole stick. I think I've got one in the garage that the old homeowner left behind. Uh, yeah, I've yet to use it. I have yet to use it. So this will help you make very accurate measured drill holes because they need to be lined up like right dead nuts on the money right on the money and this will help you achieve that and you could change it for different angles different sides different widths boards you can do a lot of combinations with these and these are actually very easy to home make same thing with the pocket jig well I say that as being a machinist, but from a machinist standpoint, this one wouldn't be that hard to make. But some of these you can make very easily without really being a machinist. Um, I want to get this straightened up and I want to check out some of this stuff. I'm excited. I've never used any of it. Never used any of it. Bought it up during the rebuild because I want to start woodworking and it was a little risky buying a bunch of crap. I don't know if I'm even going to get into woodworking, but I dove in head first. Man, I am shaky. I am shaky, shaky, shaky. This is where I would say I'm shakier than a Catholic priest at a, an insert some tasteless humor, but I better not do that on YouTube. Shaker than a Catholic priest did a yeah, you get the point. So pretty much any project, even a small little project, you're going to be drilling, countersinking, driving. If you've only got one drill, you're gonna spend a ton of time going back and forth between your driver your drill bit, your countersink. So 
potentially every single hole in your project is going to involve you changing three times you can have easily a dozen or more holes to contend with times three changes you know so your alternative is having two drills now you need two drills two batteries fortunately they all have very inexpensive versions of their good stuff like this milwaukee is only like 40 dollars or 30 bucks super cheap because it's not like the fuel it's not you know super good one and it's still pretty good but it was very inexpensive and rigid is the same way rigid has you know pretty inexpensive stuff and honestly i end up using every drill i have I even have another one that I am forever drilling and needing counter sinks, bits for driving in whatever. It's usually drywall screws. I like drywall screws or lag bolts. I use a lot of lag bolts where I'll actually use a socket and a socket with a socket adapter. But yeah. Yeah, otherwise you're changing changing out components non-stop. So that's one thing. And, look, <clears throat> and yeah, I'm in no shape to even do a video, but any, pretty much any one of these that we just discussed, as far as any hole in your project, is going to need a depth stop of some type. You're not going to be able to, you don't want to punch all the way through. So you're going to either put a piece of tape, a little piece of tape. So you know visually where to stop so you don't punch through. Which tape, tape is risky. You can easily overshoot tape. There are physical collars. Now these are like industrial shaft collars that you would find on machinery. Somebody cleverly decided to start using these as depth stops, and they work really good. They're a very positive. There's no going past it accidentally unless you didn't tighten it up enough, but yeah, those are very, very common now. And that, again, involves a changeover. Different, different sizes for different drill bits. Um... And again, you'll have to change over for your countersink because chances are you're going to want a countersink. There's multiple reasons for that, to hide it for looks. Maybe you've got to go so deep that the screw isn't even going to really make it. Do I got a screw over here? I must. I must. I don't. <laughs> But in some situations, your screw may be not that long and you would like countersink so the screw would have further to uh, drive in. Countersinks are good for that. These are the countersinks that we use in the machine shop at work. And the nice thing about this style, these will burn clean through the hardest of metals these are badass little countersinks that the guys at the machine shop love these we have so many of these at work and they are badass they will just burn right through any hard tool steel chromium whatever it is this stuff these are really really amazing um, I've been using them for woodworking because they, they work very, very well for countersinking w holes in wood. And which brings us to these. It still involves a changeover. I'm going to cut these stupid things open. Finally, finally, I've been waiting and waiting and waiting. Are we in a frame? I'm out of frame, dog. And I also have some other ones here that I don't even know what they do. Um, where's my snaps? Shit. I just had them. Bear with me. So 
these are definitely the cheapest. Is it cheap? some information on there that I just totally destroyed. No big deal. So, let's see here. I do like when your drill accessories have what's called a hex shank. And that is these basically like a socket type of end, which are extremely helpful and useful because they will fit in any drill chuck and never spin out on you. So there's a lot, a lot of times, a lot of times, I cannot tighten up the chuck enough to prevent the drill bit from spinning in there. It just, it just won't tighten up enough, you know? And these prevent that. That's one bonus for these. These, you don't have to tighten the holy hell out of it. The other nice thing is if you have these cheap little adapters, they make changing in and out your accessories incredibly easy. So I do have a whole bunch of these. Sometimes I use them, I don't have enough. Drill bits. Uh, what else? And all your accessories will have a, a option to come with hex ends. That's something to keep in mind. They don't all have that, which is weird, but they should. I think they all should have it. I don't know why they don't. Because <clears throat> these are just so prone to spin on you. And those you can use in your driver too, so... Drivers are making more and more of an appearance in the workshop. And drivers do not have a drill chuck in there. Drivers are meant to accept more sockets and s different type of mechanical fasteners than wood shop is used to seeing. But more and more people are using these. These are, it's not really a drill. They call it a driver, the impact driver. And they're, they're great in a the shop. They're great in the shop. I had never really thought of using it. I'm a you know, mechanic, pretty much. New to woodworking, but it's found its way into the wood shop. And we're glad it did. Glad it did. This thing's got a lot of power too. Not real powerful. But occasionally you need to put in lag bolts which I don't have any, for example, big old bolts that you would normally need like an impact gun to put in to a piece of wood. All right, so these depth stops, these have built-in depth stops that you can set. We'll try. Three and one depth stop countersink. I could tell just by the way it feels how shitty it is. Like just now the Allen almost rounded right off. Being rounded, being round shank, you gotta crank it down really good, especially for this, because it's probably gonna wanna take off and start spinning on you. Wow, wow, is it really that wobbly or did I put it in crooked? It is that wobbly. Holy shit. 
Yeah, that's the thing about these Made in China tools. They're under no sort of spec quality control or spec guidelines. They're just gonna dump out what the hell ever crooked ass shit. Okay, so right off the bat, it's barely biting and drilling into this end grain. Essentially, like, does not want to drill through this. I am pushing pretty hard. <laughs> I'm not super impressed, but I was pushing really, really hard. It did not want to go. These look like extremely aggressive drill bits, but... They are not sharp in any way. These are extremely dull to the feel. I don't know if maybe it'll get better after you see all right, like that's gonna happen. And the countersink itself is not that good. Okay, I am pushing like a so look crazy. But yeah, it did, it worked. There's a countersink, it did its job. It stopped it at the right depth and yeah, it did its job. have to switch over to one of these. This is a big sucker, it barely even fits. Yeah, you would drill your hole and then have to switch over. A huge difference from a good drill bit to a shitty one. And then countersink it with this. That's all wonked out too. That's probably because I got it in there. Fun funny. But yeah, they make they do the exact same thing. If I had a bolt out, I could give you an exact demonstration of exactly why we do that but you can probably figure it out it just makes the head sit flush or in some cases you would go really deep if you wanted to get a smaller bolt through a gigantic piece of wood i have these which i don't even know what the heck they do i saw them at a flea market and i wanted to grab them they look very similar These are like a hex design, but not a standard hex. I'm not sure what these are even gonna do. Everything's a struggle today. I'm just kind of getting up. Hmm, I don't know. It's like spring loaded or something. It's kind of strange. I'll have to do some research and see what these are for exactly. Must be a little hole saw maybe. Adjustable. There we go. So that on threads with the spring. Okay, so, so you can do. Ah, oh, I just dropped the spring. You can do it without, but what about this part? It's loose and it's not moving. 
Why would it be there? What purpose would... Is there a second one? No. What purpose would that serve? It must move and I can't figure out how. Oh, there we go. He's got any more than that. It's not much. <clears throat> okay. Yep. There it is. I'm just being an idiot. Okay. That's not a whole lot of adjustment. it for a minute and go find that spring. Yeah, it was easy. I stepped on it. <laughs> yeah, interesting. to me doesn't make sense the spring I wonder if the spring is supposed to be somewhere else and it just came like this this does not what purpose would this spring serve this is threaded so it's not doing any type of moving where would that spring come into play pushing the wood chips out of the hole so a lot of times your hole saw is traditionally the cup style get clogged really fast and they're difficult to clean out. And I am assuming this spring is going to keep that from happening. But if we kept going this part, this little donut would end up breaking off in there and being stuck in there and it'll stop this from cutting completely. I'm guessing that's what that's for. It's like a little hole saw. I can't, I got them so long ago, I can't remember what they were for. I gotta do some research and see. I'm buying stuff, I don't even know what it does. I had a whole set of them really cheap, so I, I, I was like, yeah, I'll try them out. No, I don't remember, I don't remember what I wanted them for. But, I gotta get motivated here because we've got joints to make I really need to practice so my entire little woodworking career I've always used the same very simple joint called a rabbit so here's an example of this was some somebody else made this it was in the machine shop for a tool holder, something to hold tools on. The, the tool that is long gone, they just butt jointed it. They did it pretty nicely. That's just a simple butt joint. So a rabbit would have been notching this part out so that this sat, sat in there. Instead of just sitting on top, it would have been like incorporated in. I could do a video. Rabbits are an extremely easy joint. Uh, but if you didn't have access to like saws and saws especially, it may be tough to do some of these joints. Yeah, especially the pocket. I don't know. I've been wanting to try this pocket hole jig for the longest time. The idea with that is it's going to drill a perfect hole for us to fasten these two boards together with a screw. Generally, they sell special screws for this, which I do not have. And another thing you'll need is a clamp, a good one too. Probably vice grips, probably vice grips. I don't think a quick clamp is going to be strong enough. You'll want something real strong to clamp this, even a C-clamp. But, hmm. That might be the worst video in video history. I'm going to try and get set up. I want to try and get cleaned off here and make some pocket holes. I want to try and make pocket holes. And This video's already run too long. I don't even know how far we are, but I'm sure it's too long. 
Anyway, thank you so much for taking the time. Have a great day. Bye-bye.